Are halogen lamps safe for your home? Tonight at 10 on 13. Our top story on Live at 5, a wall comes crashing down at a shopping mall. I run. When I heard it falling, I just turned around and run back the other way because it was hard to even see in there. People are trapped beneath the rubble. My sister is in here. We could hear people screaming on the other end for help. Now the desperate search for survivors is on as investigators piece together this deadly puzzle. And right now you're looking at live pictures of North Line Mall. As you can see, more than eight hours after that wall collapse, investigators are still out there, still looking for victims and for clues as to how this all happened. We'll show you that in just a moment. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Melanie Lawson. We have team coverage of this deadly wall collapse. So let's get right to my co-anchor, Alan Himberger, who joins us live from North Line with the very latest. Alan? Good afternoon, Melanie. This whole tragic event began just before 9 a.m. this morning. Before the mall even opened, there were mall walkers in there. There were perhaps a, a couple of uh, other employees in there. What we do know is that a wall came down. They were de demolishing the Josky store that had been here at the North Line Mall to make way for a new Magic Johnson movie theater when this all came down. We know right now that uh, at least two confirmed deaths that we have to talk about. Four to six people they believe are still missing. We've seen relatives uh, combing through the parking lot out here because they, they've got relatives' cars out here that uh, they know someone should be behind the wheel there and they are not. In addition, we have at least six people injured, uh, at least uh, six people who are inside that mall and one firefighter who was injured. It all began about 8.45 this morning, an hour before most businesses in the mall were opened. But there were people inside, employees getting ready for the day, college students headed to class in the mall, and many seniors out for their daily walk. Suddenly, a wall came crumbling down with a huge roar. It was an area where a Josky store once stood and a Magic Johnson movie theater was going to be built. People began running to the scene and knew immediately it was a catastrophic event. The fire department, ambulance units, and police arrived within moments, several people taken away to be treated. It became apparent quickly that there would be fatalities. Dog teams were brought in to find survivors or bodies, and the mayor was on the scene to offer any help the city could provide. Taking a look at a live picture right now, you can see there's a concentrated effort right over there near the front entrance uh, of the area that collapsed right now. And we know from experience uh, covering the Oklahoma City tragedy uh, two years ago that when they put those flags out, it usually means that the dogs have made a, a contact ascent and they believe that a body is there. We've just mo moments ago saw them uh, unraveling a body bag and you can see right now, let's uh, swing over there, Kevin. You can see if they're coming out right now Let's see if we can get in there. They were just uh, moments ago coming out uh, with one of the bodies right now. Again, we have uh, two confirmed dead, but they have not been removed from the scene as of right now. Well, we have uh, prepared this very special graphic right now to help you understand what happened this morning at the North Line Mall. Let's take a look at that right now. The walkway is located in this area colored green. It's about 35 feet wide. That's where the injuries occurred. The wall that collapsed is shown in the area in darkened red. It is 18 feet high, about 150 feet long. And it's just beside the demolition area with what used to be the Josky store. As the wall collapsed, the roof came in with it, pinning people in that walkway below. Our Stuart Stanley was one of the first uh, eyewitness news reporters, one of the first reporters in Houston on the scene this morning. Let's uh, go to Stuart right now for his vantage point. Stuart. Alan, just as you said, uh, they're bringing one of the bodies out now, but I spoke to one of the officers just a moment ago with the K-9 crew, and he said there are air pockets inside underneath that wall, and they are not giving up hope at all. Take a look over here. The crews have brought in some very heavy equipment trying to move these concrete beams, try to locate some survivors. Houston Chief Eddie Corral says four to six people may still be trapped inside, but what you see here is nothing like the confusion that came moments after that wall collapsed. Around 8.45 this morning, something happened to the wall along the entrance to North Line Mall. It's a place where any given morning, dozens of health-conscious walkers pace the long hallway. This morning, survivors say something went terribly wrong. The roof just started falling, and we started running, and it just blew us out the door down here. This is my husband. There was a lady in front of me. It blew her out. She fell. I fell. And then he blew out on top of me. For those who witnessed the collapse of tons of concrete and steel, all they could do was run to help. Many after that could only stare helplessly. They were alive. They were more or less moving uh, as if attempting to try to get off from under, uh, up, up, 
get out from under the rubbish. As for fire officials, the safety of all the victims and the rescuers must be taken into consideration. We're shoring up the walls to ensure that the firefighters uh, don't get hurt as they're going about the rescue attempts. The police dogs coming, uh, and uh, I think some of them are already here. And then the uh, fiber optics from public work, where we'll be able to look under the rubble and debris. Back here once again live, you can see Santana Funeral Home is here to pick up uh, at least one of the dead. So far confirmed, we have two dead in this collapse, five injured. Chief Eddie Corral says four to six possibly still missing, and these gentlemen and ladies will be working around the clock to try to clean up this mess to see if there are any air pockets inside there where someone may still be trapped and still be alive. But there are plenty of witnesses and plenty of survivors around here this morning when it all came down. Cynthia Cisneros, my colleague, is standing by live with more on that story. Cynthia? Some terrifying times this morning, Stuart, as both men and women ran for their lives right over there trying to escape the collapsing wall. These faces tell the story. In the moments after the collapse, Eyewitness News captures the frantic search for loved ones. My sister is in here. Edwards, Lee Edwards, and she didn't call, yeah. Every morning, she walks over there with a bunch of friends every morning. Yes. She didn't come back this morning? No, her car is over on the other side where she always parked and go in the mall. Moments later, an emergency landing. This is the gentleman you see every morning? Every morning, he's a mall walker. Oh, God, like, it's shocking. I mean, he, he was just barely getting over a heart attack. Not too long ago, he had to be walking in a stroke. Uh, you know, I come to work every morning, and I see him there, and he's just smiling away. Eyewitnesses say it only took a few seconds for a crackling noise to turn into disaster. When I heard it falling, I just turned around and run back the other way. To help, we're down here, help. He, and we, we just couldn't get through there. So we went around through the middle, and we, we couldn't get through. How come you couldn't get through? It was, it, it was so dusty and stuff, you couldn't even breathe. And there is still a lot of dust out here, as well as a growing crowd of people anxious to hear and see the latest developments. We, of course, will bring them to you live. I'm Cynthia Cisneros reporting live. We now go to my colleague, Alan Hamburger, upstairs. And Alan, we just saw the Bears motorcade pass by us just moments ago. Indeed, Cynthia, uh, thank you very much uh, for your work and effort. Mayor Lanier has been here uh, throughout the day. He came here uh, very early this morning. He made his way to the site as soon as he got word of the accident. He wanted to express his sympathy and help as much as he could with the investigation. From my uh, point of view also, I wanted to look over the uh, site, uh, get some preliminary notion as to what happened, so as to have an idea of what to do from, uh, of what, what, what course of action would be appropriate uh, for us. Now, there were six people who did uh, survive that incident this morning, and they've been taken to various area hospitals. Some of them are over at Herman Hospital, and one survivor with a fantastic story. Let's uh, go to our colleague Dan Cambry right now live with that story. Dan? Alan, I'm uh, very happy to report that I have much better news on my end. All but one of those second uh, seven victims that were rushed to the hospital for treatment have been treated and released. Now, 67-year-old Maxine Bell is still inside Herman Hospital. She suffered a crushed ankle. We understand that she uh, underwent surgery and is doing very nicely, but folks, pay particular attention to the exclusive video and interview that you are about to see because it is truly a story of survival in this destruction. The man that you're looking at was jogging this morning in the mall, saw the wall come crashing down and jumped through a glass window just in the nick of time to save his own life. It would come down slowly, see? And then it just, it started on the other end. But it was catching up to you. Yeah, it was, that's where it was catching up with me. So you looked for a way out, and the only way out was through that store window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I could have went two other ways, but I didn't take no chance, because I figured if they're going to fall, it might, you know, all collapse. I guess you know jumping through that glass saved your own life today. Well, it did. It did. It did, did. And, Alan, that is truly a story of survival and all of this destruction. We'll send it back over to you at Northline Mall. Okay, Dan Cambry, thanks very much. Of course, uh, there are a lot of folks out there who are concerned. As I mentioned a while ago, there are some people who are walking through the parking lot here looking at their loved ones or, or someone who they know, their car, and it's empty and they don't know where they are. If you are like that and you have some questions about uh, someone who you know who may be missing, we are, are going to throw up this telephone number for you right now. This is one you should call, 247-8624. That is a hot 
hotline set up by the Houston Fire Department. If you think you have a relative hurt or missing in this accident, you can call that number and get more information. Of course, shockwaves from this uh, catastrophic event have been felt all the way uh, through Houston. They've reached all across the country, even to California, where Magic Johnson himself has issued a statement. Here it is for you. He says, quote, Magic Johnson Theaters extends its sincerest sympathies to the injuries and the families of the victims of the tragic occurrence at the North Line Mall. Although we have not begun construction of our theaters and were not involved in North Line Mall's current demolition of the existing building, Magic Johnson Theaters, as a future member of the North, a North Line Mall community, joins them in their sorrow on this sad day. Once again, uh, the situation uh, here was that the Joski store is being torn down. There was, uh, let's go in on this, uh, the, uh, the scene right now as best we can. The uh, Joski store was being torn down. There was a, a wall up between that and the Bells store, which is the, the facade wall that you see that those posts are leaning on. Uh, and that's where uh, most of the, the injuries occurred. This is the spot they're clearing out for the future site of the Magic Johnson Theaters. Again, uh, our experience from Oklahoma City a couple of years ago is teaching us a couple of things here. We can get an indication of when the dogs come by uh, and they, they pick up a hot scent, they feel it might be a survivor or a body. Uh, the people who, the rescue workers then make a, a uh, they make a paint mark there, and then uh, once they have confirmed whether that uh, person is in fact deceased, then they'll put up a little flag to, to indicate uh, the, uh, what the uh, rescuers will find in that location. You see Mayor Lanier, who was just at the scene there a moment ago. Uh, also, also want to make mention to you folks uh, who are coming out of the city, the North Freeway is going to have a major tie-up because when you come over the uh, cross timbers, or right near the cross timbers exit, you get a, a fabulous view of the North Line Mall, and you can see all the, the goings on here. So there is a, a major uh, a factor as well, both on the North Freeway going north and southbound as well. There's a lot of folks who are here at taking a look at what is going on. Melanie, that's the situation as we have it from here. We have two confirmed dead, but they are searching through three to four feet of rubble and debris right now, looking for possible survivors. No one has given up hope at this point. And of course, at this point, Alan, North Line Mall is completely shut down. Is that correct? Indeed it is. All the doors are chain locked. Okay. We've had several calls. Want to clear that up. Thank you very much. Now, again, Alan has certainly done a great job, but want to wrap up real quickly the statistics that we know. Two people have been confirmed dead in that wall collapse at North Line Mall, and a total of seven people, six citizens and one firefighter injured. Uh, and as Dan Cambry mentioned, already most of those people have been treated and released from the hospitals. Four to six people still missing at this hour, and rescue crews obviously still looking for survivors. Now, Eyewitness News is on top of this unfolding story. We're going to continue our live team coverage throughout the evening. Not only will we have more a little bit later on in this newscast, but also a good deal more tonight at 6 and 10. So please tune in for the very latest. Now, there are several other big stories to bring you today on Live at 5. A major traffic tie-up in southeast Houston this afternoon when a crane burst into flames on a Houston freeway. Also, a few new details in the investigation of a mother who first claimed her baby was kidnapped, then admitted that she killed the four-month-old baby. And are you trying to lose weight? Who isn't? Well, get your pen and paper ready and VCR if you need to. We've got the grapefruit diet coming up in our health check report. We'll be right back. And I'm Alan Hemberger, live at North Line Mall. Our continuing coverage here as rescuers look for survivors and victims. Our continuing coverage right after this break. You're watching Channel 13's Live at 5. With Melanie Lawson. Movie, a huge ball of smoke billowing from a burning bridge. In reality, it's what happened between Pasadena and Houston this morning. That's where a motor crane erupted into flames as it was traveling westbound on Highway 225 near the South Loop. Take a look. The crane operator, Charlie Vaughn, says he smells smoke, and before he knew it, his crane was on fire right under one of those interchange overpasses. Fire officials say the cause was a transmission fuel leak. The roadways Tri uh, backed up a great deal that hour, and they are still closed right now. Well, they searched last.